Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome to the Natural History Museum. We are currently in the insect collection and I'm joined today by Gavin Broad. Um, Gavin is one of our insect curators and we've been discussing fig wasps. So, Gavin, we've got a lot of wasps here. Are these the fig wasps that we were talking about in our video? Yeah, so these are the famous fig wasps. Uh, these tiny little things down here are all mounted on little bits of card. So they, these are fig wasps, they're tiny little agionid wasps. And this particular group of specimens here are so the species that pollinate the fig that we mostly eat. So it's Blastophaga cines, I think you pronounce it. And I, I just can't believe how small they are. They're absolutely tiny. They are really <laughs> tiny wasps. I mean, they have to develop inside the flower, inside the ovule of a, of a, little, of a fig. Uh, it requires, you, you don't get a lot of food if you're a fig wasp larva. So you, <laughs> to, so you can fit a lot of figs into a, a lot of wasps into a fig. Yeah. And I know there's quite um, an interesting difference between males and female fig wasps. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. So they're weird, <clears throat> weird creatures, really. Uh, fig wasp females look um, a bit more conventionally wasp-like. They've got a stingy bit called the ovipositor, which they lay the eggs with. And, but they're quite flattened because they've got to crawl through the osteola of the fig. Um, but in other respects, you know, they've got wings, antennae, that usual sort of uh, accoutrements to being a wasp. If you're a male fig wasp, um, they don't have anything much. They've got a big head, uh, sometimes armed with big jaws for killing other males. And they've got an abdomen, with, uh, but they don't have any wings. So they've got tiny little legs, tiny little antennae, and they look like strange little they don't even look like wasps and they just crawl around in the dark in the fig, uh, finding females to mate with. And because the, the, the female and the male figs, they're both born from the wasp in the same fig, does that mean that the, the brothers and sister wasps are mating together? Yes, yeah, so you will get, you know, mixing because you get multiple females that go into the, the fig, but quite often they'll be mating with their siblings. Yeah, so it's a slightly, uh, <laughs> uh, there's, an issue, there's an issue of trying to avoid inbreeding depression. Yeah. You know? Is that a common thing we see with other wasp species or is that more just a fig wasp thing? No, it's, it's quite a common thing because if you're a little tiny uh, insect, uh, a little tiny wasp, say, developing on a, a host insect, mm -hmm. like a, a great example is blowflies in a bird's nest. This has been studied a lot. They sort of emerge from their little blowfly pupa and they've got a mate, but they may never meet another wasp in the world. So they mate with their siblings before they venture off into the big wide world. So it's a way of making sure that they do mate, but obviously that leads to undesirable consequences a lot of the time of bin breeding. So they have really complicated genetic mechanisms to stop them getting inbred. So we've got lots of species of fig wasp here. Are all of our figs pollinated by fig wasps? Um, so every fig species, uh, of every fig tree species, is pollinated by one species of fig wasp, or sometimes more, but basically one on one. So there's about 750 species of each. But the right. figs that we eat are mostly tend to be uh, the same species from the Mediterranean, which has now been introduced all over the world. And although, you know, traditionally it is, we do eat the pollinated figs and uh, with uh, its digested wasps inside. Increasingly, we eat uh, sort of self, uh, self-fertilizing figs. They, they're not pollinated, they just sort of prune the tree in the right way, the right time of year, and then we eat those figs that have never been anywhere near uh, a wasp. The waspy figs tend to be the ones you eat dried. Interesting. So most of the time we get our figs from the supermarket, they haven't been near the fig wasps. Sadly not. No. <laughs> Wow, that's fascinating. So you mentioned another species of wasp and there are thousands of species of wasps and we've got some more here. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about these ones? I'm just spotting this one here that's huge compared to our tiny little fig wasp. So this is everybody's idea of a sort of nightmare wasp. It's a, it's a pepsis, it's a tarantula hunting wasp. And what they do, like the name suggests, is they hunt tarantulas. So they grab a tarantula, paralyze it with an incredible venom drag it off to a nest hole, lay an egg on it. And so their young eat the tarantula as their, as their f entire food source. Oh my gosh, that is mm. quite disturbing, <laughs> but really cool. Um, would, the, like, would these be found in Australia? Where, where would we find um, these tarantula eating wasps? So the tarantula eating wasps, are, the true pepsis are found in South and Central America and right. up into the Southern United States. But you get other similar species in real loads of sort of hot, dry areas of the world. Um, mm. This, and you get spider hunting wasps in the UK, but not quite as impressive. No. Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Gavin. I've learned so much about not just fig wasps, but all of these other wasp species. It's been really interesting. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for lots more content from the Natural History Museum.